<sighs> yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got myself into this situation. <laughs> Guitar picks. I am never gonna find that again. Guitar picks are pretty boring. Uh, we all have them. So this video is more so for me than for you. But if you wanna stick around because you're a guitar nerd, of course you are, you're watching a video about picks, feel free to do so. You know those like signature pick tins where players have like all the picks that they use in them? Well, here's my one, four picks. When I started playing guitar, I didn't really care about picks. It was just whatever I had. But when I started really getting into playing, uh, I wanted a pick that would help me rather than hinder me. And I found the best one for me was the Dunlop Jazz 3. This little red boy is 1.41 millimeters of nylon, which really doesn't fare well against steel strings. Uh, so they don't last a long time, which has been a bit of a problem for me because they don't last very long and I've never been able to buy them in bulk. But what I have been able to buy in bulk is... Bags... Bags of 72. I'm never gonna find those either. Dunlop Jazz 3 Tortex. These are 1.14 millimeters, so they're a little bit thinner and I can get lots of them, but they seem to last longer than the nylon ones. These have become my main pick for the last probably four years. I went to a Paul Gilbert clinic and he was using this super paper thin pick. It was something like 0.6 of a millimeter, way too skinny for me, but it got me thinking, well, if it's good enough for Paul Gilbert, I should probably give it a go. So this is the closest thing I could find to a Jazz 3 shape in super thin sizes. So this is 0.88 of a millimeter. This is the Pick Boy Edge. They call it carbon nylon. I don't know if that means that it's mixed with carbon or not, but it's got some cool grips and it's great for pick scrapes. But because it's so thin and nylon doesn't last very well against strings, they tear up in maybe 15 minutes of playing, maybe less. And I can't buy them in bulk either. So this is a nice and fun pick that I like, but I can't sustain using them for very long. In my pick experimentation, I also fell into the hype of the Dunlop Flow. This is the thickest pick I've ever used. It's a two millimeter thick pick. I can't remember what material it's made out of, but I'm pretty sure it's something that's exclusive to Dunlop. Some kind of proprietary mixture of materials. I find that the name is apt because I can kind of flow over the strings while doing arpeggios, but that's the Dunlop Flow. Now I want to compare these just for myself, but to give us a point of reference, this is a pick I don't like. This is a Fender medium gauge celluloid pick. I don't like the shape, I don't like the feel, I don't like the sound, but uh, it's a very common pick and I thought we may as well compare it to the others. Fun fact, celluloid, the material that this pick is made of, is very flammable. Don't try this at home. Oh, this is a bad idea. <laughs> Probably toxic. I'm gonna open a window. Rest in peace, guitar pick I never liked. You won't be missed. But that isn't very interesting. Big Chungus. I bought this pick for three different reasons. Number one, curiosity kind of got me. I saw this picture of this massive pick. It was like 25 mil thick. And it was made by Hushmid for a guy who had a hand injury. So his grip when, when closing his hand, he couldn't hold a really tiny pick. So he needed a big pick. And that kind of got my curiosity going on these super fat picks. The second reason for buying this is uh, I'm fiscally irresponsible. This costs $17.95. Definitely the most I've ever spent on a pick. And thirdly, I knew the thumbnail would look pretty damn good. This is a pick made by Purple Plectrums. I believe that's the same pick company that makes Rob Scallon's picks. I was looking at Hufschmied picks, but they were made out of some super expensive materials, which made the picks very expensive. So this is the cheapest, really thick pick that I could find. So it's a Purple Plectrums Mid-Tech Arrow 
and I ordered it to be 16 millimeters thick. They make 19 millimeters and like 22 millimeters, ridiculous sizes. This I thought at least I could get a hold of. This isn't an ad by the way, it's literally just, I bought a pick. Initially when holding it, it, it is comfortable. It does feel a lot more comfortable than the other picks actually. But it's also really weird because the way they've sanded it and whatever material it is, it gives it like this fluff texture to it and it's really soft so it feels like a soft like peach fuzz pick but it's really hard it throws me off a little bit but it's sharp and uh i'm excited to hear it so the first comparison between all the different guitar picks is solid picking and i think you can really hear the difference between kind of the eq range of each pick in this example <laughs> I liked pretty much all of those examples except for maybe the Fender pick. I felt it was a little bit too top endy. The next example and probably the most fun thing you can do with a pick is pick scraping. And I think the thin picks are really gonna steal the show on this because they allow you to get into the winds of the thick strings. <laughs> It sounds like you're trying to pick scrape with a wet noodle. So the definite winners to my ears are the Pick Boy Edge and the Fender Medium Gauge. Those are just the thinner picks out of the bunch, so they sounded the best for pick scraping. So next is clean. You'll probably hear some slight tonal differences between the picks. Uh, let's give that a go. What was interesting there, I found, was the thicker picks normally sounded a little bit brighter than the thinner ones, which was unusual. Now lastly, we're going to do a little bit of picking dexterity. The big selling point of these big thick picks is that uh, you have a lot of control over your picking. You have smaller movements to move greater distances than with a really thin, skinny pick. So uh, let's see if that's actually the case. I'm going to run through one scale and uh, we'll see how it sounds. Yeah, I can pretty much back up that advertisement. I do feel a lot of control while playing. The side effect going from this massive thick pick back to like my standard go-to Tortex Jazz 3 is that I feel like a giant. It's like going from a bass to a six string guitar. Uh, you have a lot more kind of control in the thin pick after using this thick pick. So I've kind of come to the conclusion that while comically large picks look very stupid, they're not. There is uses for this. I do quite like it for intricate picking and I think it would be a great practice tool. So I'm gonna keep using this as a practice tool. I'd never use it live and I'd probably lose it. It seems to sound cool, last, and uh, I like it. So that's my conclusion. I'm probably going to stick with my original 
Jazz 3 because that did everything to a decent level. So let me know which pick out of the six picks here you liked. Let me know if you'd consider trying a thick pick. And I'll play you out with a riff comparison on all six picks just to give you a final point of reference. All right, subscribe, like the video, let me know about the picks in the comments. See you next time. Oh.